Sink. <laughs> Everyone say sink. Sink. I want sink. to sink. 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 The bottom sink. Of the sink. Sink. I think he's broken. Yeah, he's broken. Welcome to Was It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today, we're taking a look at Bad Batch, Season 2, Episodes 3, 4, and 5. I'm Ravi, and as always, I'm joined by my two brothers, Arjuna and Krishna. And Krishna is making a weird face. Again. Uh, Again. Again. I mean, I guess that's actually his face. So. Oh, thanks. You're thanks. welcome. I was getting my eyebrow exercises in. You know, it's very important. I feel like raising your eyebrows like that a bunch would actually increase your chances of wrinkles. So, and Christian, you already have no wrinkles comment. in your eyes, so maybe stop doing In my that. eyes? <laughs> well, I mean, sorry, in around your eye. eyeballs, you have <laughs> yeah. No, wrinkles. I like the idea of wrinkles in my eyes, like you my know, eyeballs. I think we all do. I mean, I've been trying to use cream things to, like, fix that. Cream so, things. Cream things, yes. <laughs> Good old oh, cream man. things. Cream so I've tried, so tried sour cream. <laughs> oh, God. Have you tried, like, a cookie sandwich, like, the cream? Yeah, yeah. Cream? Oreos, take that. Just oh, Okay. Have what you tried about, cream like, cheese? Generic brand? Like, you remember back when we were kids, Dad would buy, like, the generic brand sandwich mm-hmm. cookies? We tried that cream because it's not the same as, like, an Oreo cream. So, Bad Bash know? Season 2, <laughs> Episodes 3 and 4. It's been uh, an interesting ride. You know, how would it you has. guys... It's been a ride. It's been a ride. Uh, how, how do we want to do our one-word impressions here? Do we want to just do it for all three episodes? Do we want to do it for any particular... Like, how do you want to... Whatever wanna... stands out to you the most from this three-episode experience. Okay. Yeah. Who so would... maybe if you have a word that sums it all up, okay. or if it is something specific... Who wants to so go first? Like... Krishna? Uh, yeah, sure. I go. <laughs> my one-word impression is the same as my season qualifier. Crosshair. <laughs> Because that is the standout of these three episodes, that character uh, in episode three. Um, it's the standout of the season. And these are Ravi's words, not mine. That episode, apparently, for Ravi, was the standout for the entire show, Bad Batch. I don't he, know if he's he had time to think show, on that. He said the greatest 22 minutes of his entire life ever. <laughs> Wait, did I See, say that? See, that is an exaggeration. present, and oh, future. Wow, 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 wow. wow. <laughs> but he did say, he did say, no exaggeration. After the episode, that was the best episode of Bad Batch he's seen. But we do have including texts, right? season one. Right. Yeah, so yeah, those yeah, are his words. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Def- but like a thousand percent with these five, and I'm leaning to more more towards the idea that it is the best Bad Batch episode so far. Yeah, which is you know that's that's that says something. So easily the standout, um, and it was my qualifier. My qualifier for this season was we need more crosshair, or we need crosshair. He needs at least four. Crosshair led episodes this season. I think for this season to be a success, the way that these first five episodes have gone, the episode with Crosshair leads me to think that I'm correct. We need more Crosshair for this show to be good. So, so wait, your one word impression was Crosshair, right? Yes. Okay. I was confused in your explanation of what, <laughs> what the actual one word was. I was like, wait, what, what is the word? What is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I said it right off the top. Oh, Cross right. there, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> are you, are, are are you, are you okay? Are you tired? Are you tired? No, no, no. Tired? no. I mean, I know I'm you great. just came from work. It's dark out. You know, it's like it's close to my bedtime. <laughs> it's I haven't had my six milk o'clock? and cookies yet. Do you have milk and cookies every time before you go to bed? So, uh, what's your one word impression, Raffi? <laughs> so, my one word impression is going to be duty. <laughs> <laughs> duty. Duty. And I'm going to use duty in uh, two, two, two different ways. Two. Duty in the sense of the honor of the clones, their duty to serve the Empire, and like Christian was saying with the Crosshairs episode, episode three, uh, which was called the Solitary Clone, not Cloud or Claude, <laughs> whoever wrote that in the outline, um, the Solitary cl- um, Clone. Th- this was a, a very good episode that really highlights that Crosshair is like all about the duty and all about... <laughs> Is all about you all know all about taking that duty. <laughs> he's all about that duty, but he's all about you know serving the empire. He's a good soldier. Good soldiers follow orders. You know, <gasps> that's a line from the show. Is a line from Fuck. the show, um, and, and and that word works there really what really well. And then I'm going to use duty for episodes four and five, which is you know episode four called faster. Episode five, um, entom- entombed, 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 uh, entombed. entombed. Um, I'm going to call. Couldn't those bother to learn how it's pronounced. <laughs> 
I'm going to call those two episodes duty in terms of they were kind of like poop episodes. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought in terms of you had to do your duty for this podcast to watch them. It works, oh, it works there as well because like yeah. especially duty. I think you know, if I was going to rate these three episodes, episode three, episode five, and then episode four being the worst one. Oh, interesting. Episode I, I liked episode five because we it, it – we got to we got a little piece of history of the galaxy. You know, there's an alien race that had created this walking um, a you know, mountain thing in Majigi, and that you know that you know uh, tech says that it's older than the Republic. Republic is something like ten thousand plus years. I might be way off there, but like it's a super old race or something. So it's it's always kind of cool to like have those episodes and those adventures that kind of expand you know, the galaxy and the universe yeah. of Star Wars. So that's why that's better than four. Episode four was just very much like y- you, you knew tech was going to race. You knew that was going to happen. You knew that. <laughs> At least it was pod racing, man. I mean, this is pod racing. Well, technically, it wasn't pod racing. What, does no, anyone remember yeah. what this was sport? riot racing? Riot racing. I believe is what they called it. Yeah, riot yes. racing. So, yeah. And, you know, like, that's cool and all, but, like, the episode was just too predictable. Um, I mean, it's, you know. Bad Batch and Clone Wars have never not been predictable. Very true. And, true. I mean, and the other thing, too, is episode four really reminds you that this is a kid's show. That's what episode five was to me. Episode, episode five, five, okay. episode five to me was like, oh, this is a children's show. Right. And that's going to lead to my one word impression, which I've definitely used before, and I think all of us have used before, but that is felony. And I think this three-episode arc highlights the felony of it all, right? With, like, these animated shows where... You have the heights of episode three, which is like some of the best Star Wars oh, yeah. you can get. And then you have these other episodes where you're just like, what in the actual fuck am I watching? <laughs> like, this is just... And even the premiere, like, the premiere was, like, good. Sure, yeah. But it wasn't, like, great. And, you know, we have this five-episode arc, this five the five episodes of the show that we've watched so far. So far, and it's just kind of like, okay, you got one standout, you got, like three mids and you have like a real swing and a miss <laughs> you know that's oh, interesting man. you didn't like the, the it treasure was hunt so it's campy as hell boring it was definitely boring. it reminded me of like that like it honestly reminded me of early season one clone wars like the stupid like r2 episode or like oh when the, he takes the droids on the he, merry-go-round he, around the galaxy yeah or like the jar jar episodes hey, from from re- clone wars which are just you know, atrociously bad. You are where people are going to come. Krishna. People are going to come for you about That's that R two D two episode. I'm happy. Some people love I've embraced, that episode arc. I've embraced my role here. I uh, wasn't I good. just want to point out this might be the spiciest that Juno's ever come out for I mean, real. Just came out yeah, and just said it's the most boring thing I've ever seen. I'm like, wow, that's. That's pretty like yeah, spicy. Okay, I, that, you, that, that, I agree that with you. By the way, was bad and like. No, I agree. The, the Wait, pirate- I'm sorry. Have we found our Juno's Canto bites? <laughs> we found yeah. our Juno's Canto bites. It might be. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. It was just. It was just bad, and I'm just like, I ended that episode. And I'm like, God, bad batch. Sucks. Kind of sucks this season. Oh. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Wow, that episode was that bad yeah, for you. Like, it. It kind of like it, it. Looking at it as a whole, right? Because mm-hmm. like now you kind of look at these first five episodes. You're like. The episode without the ma- majority of the batch was really good. Everything else that has them is just kind of boring. And I'm just like. You know, that was like the whole middle part of season one. Yeah. Just well, big like time. That. Big yeah. time. Because, because yeah, it's it was like pe- yeah. peaks yeah. and valleys. Yeah. Peaks it really and valleys. is. It really is peaks and valleys. And it's not like the batch is like not interesting. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like. Maybe they're really not interesting. Working with like Sid or. Just some of these adventures that they kind of have them going on. But, like, Crosshair is more interesting. The Cody stuff was, like, really, really cool in episode in episode three. Even, like, again, episode three, guess what we got? Another Dooku mentioned, which is, like, oh, this is cool. Like, Count Dooku, most important Star Wars figure of the last, like, six months in animated Star Wars lore. It's true. You, it's very true. Do you know, you, know you, you said the Filoni effect, and I think the Filoni effect is this, is that... If you take all the shows that he's done, every season has has maybe four or five core episodes, and then the rest is just filler. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. you could make incredible Star Wars if you just had those five episodes. Right. Make each season like a mini 
season or combine them into one big season. But that's what it is. It feels like there are four or five core important episodes that move the story and all the rest. Just run like it can make it a kid show. It's just filler, week to week adventures for kids. Well, that um, makes sense because complete like, the mission. Et cetera, right, but that makes sense. Like Disney Plus, you know, they order yeah. these shows or whatever, and yeah. it's like we need you to fill X amount of weeks or however many episodes. So, in a perfect world, yeah, every single episode would be a banger. But I just don't know. I don't think that's possible. Like even Mandalorian no, has filler episodes, like season two. Obviously, like you guys said it best. So it was, season two is very much, uh, you know, quest of the week to move you to the next plot point yeah. or whatever. You know, Boba Fett. Oh my god! Like, well, that, yeah. that gigantic show, filler until we that got that show to was so bad. They were like, oh, oh god, the show stinks. Uh, put the other show in. Put the other show. You, you know, you know, our, our producer asked it. Michael asked it after episode two. He's like, is this a children's show? Well, episodes four and five proves that this is definitely a children's show. Definitely. You know, you have those like really adult, awesome moments, like for five hairs. minutes total right. across the season. The rest is just like. But is but that to me is confusing because yes, it's a children's show, but then I feel yeah. like the children who like episodes four and five are they gonna like episode three? Are they even gonna like episode two? Like, isn't that too dark and scary? Like, isn't isn't Might seeing be. like your point of view character in episode three? like murder a person in cold blood like scary to a child well, well hopefully. I, I don't know go kids, back, kids are smarter there. today I don't well know. also go Maybe. back to like when we were kids watching animated shows power rangers those types of things like there were some dark arcs and some more sure. adult rated like, like the green ranger like spongebob <laughs> squarepants the like first two seasons is a really good example of where children's television you know they have adult themed things in there that as kids you miss but you know it's there so that but that's a little different right like it's still like a fun bubbly show I, you cannot say episode three is fun and bubbly i had fun you're a 30 <laughs> we plus year old man <laughs> yes i yes. like watching clones question their duty right yeah, which the, is like the really is... good like really good adult content but I, I, that's I'm curious. Like, I, I want to. I want to. We should poll some children and see if they like the Bad Batch. Honestly, who was we your favorite not. Star Wars character when you were a child? Jar Jar Binks. I mean, yeah, all the droids and all the like weird alien creatures. I thought when I saw no. when I saw Episode One, I was seven, and I thought Jar Jar was great. Not I mean, Darth yeah, Maul. Yeah, Darth well, Maul was scary. Darth Vader. I Darth say... Maul and Darth Vader were scary to me. That makes sense. Yeah, so they were, they were was, scary. Right, D- like red, red horned devil guy. Like ah, scary. He's right behind you. Like ma- <laughs> like ma- like masked, d- masked giant samurai dude. Ah, scary. Right. That you makes know? sense. I thought, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good question. I, I think my favorite character from OG Star Wars, like the first time I saw, it, was definitely like Han Solo. Yeah. You know? And, he, um, and then even the prequel trilogy, I really like Qui Gon Jinn because he seemed fatherly, right? So I'm like, oh, this is like a nice dad. You know, and then I like and then Obi-Wan eventually it was Obi-Wan. I'm like, yeah, he's a nice dad too, you know. Wait, so am I the only one that liked Anakin? Like when you're a kid? In the first one? Yeah. Like, like kid was... Anakin? Maybe yeah, he was an I, annoying cause I, brat. Because I wanted Yippee! to be that. I like the pod Yeah, I wanted to be him as a like, pod yeah. racer. I'm like, I, I could be a kid cool. racer. The stuff he got to do was cool, but he sucked. I mean, as an adult looking back at it, yes, but at the time, but of, as like, a kid, look, I agree with Ravi. Yeah, you're like, whoa, that that's cool. I wish I could pod race. Well, Christian, you were a little older when I was one older. came out, so yeah. you probably you. I mean, you're all you were. I saw him for what he was, right? So you're probably like, this is annoying. You probably like, oh, this is Arjuna. Yes, yes. There we go. That makes sense. Anakin, Arjuna. Why, did, same why are you guys age. agreeing? You're supposed yeah. to. You're supposed to like be like, no, Arjuna. You were such a cool little kid. No, Arjuna. Oh, you yeah, weren't no, the hero Arjuna. that the world needed. <laughs> You were so. You're so cool. You're such a cool person. No, no, work because I am cool now. I'm just. Oh saying, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, cool. Oh That's yeah, word you're in your Darth Vader phase. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back into like the the nitty gritty of the episodes, like I, I think you know, looking at the three of these episodes, you know, especially episode four and five, they're pretty kind of like cut and dry. I think the big thing that comes out of episode four is that Sid is not to be trusted. Well, oh, um, by Dark Side. Yes, by dark side. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I like literally saw that. I'm like, that's dark side. Dark side slash Thanos. And like, they got a voice actor who even sounds like a lot of the animated versions of dark, dark side. And I'm yeah. like, what's what what's happening here? Oh. <laughs> that you mean the big uh, the big the guy big, that takes the Sid. big villain? Yeah, the villain guy. Yeah. The the 
thug, yeah, gangster right. guy. Yeah, and Sorry, then and then Teo, the droid. Do you guys know who voiced Teo? It sounds super familiar. It's, I believe it's the actor who played uh, Ben Schwartz, uh, John Ralphio from uh, Perks. Oh, oh, Sonic. Yeah, Son- yeah Sonic. 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 That's, 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 why, that's, I, that's, that's why it sounds familiar because it sounds like Sonic. Good old Teo. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's cool. That's cool. But episode three, though, has, I think, the big question at the very, very end. Count Dooku. Not Count Dooku. So at the very, very end, uh, Crosshairs and Cody are having a discussion in front of the clone uh, memorial. And, you know, they're talking about good soldiers following orders and, you know, soldiers having to, like, live with what they do. And Crosshairs, obviously, later a couple of days or whatever go by, and Crosshairs is called on for another mission and is asking, like, hey, you know, basically the commanding officer says to him, you're going to report to some other clone or, or imperial officer or something. And he's like, oh, well, what about, you know, Commander Cody? And who, who which is, is pivotal to note this, the, 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 uh, the Empire officer didn't know Commander Cody, but knows them by their, their numbers. By their numbers, right. Yeah. And the commanding officer is like, oh, he went AWOL. Funny how clones seem to disappear around you. So the question I have for you guys, do you think Cody went AWOL or is Cody under the dirt and dead? I think so. Uh, and it depends. It's like who killed him, right? Exactly. It could, it could be Crosshair. It could be the Empire. Right. Or did he escape? Right. I mean, those are like the three possibilities, right? So where are you, where so. are you all leaning towards? Oh, I think he went. I think he left. I Wait, think legit a wall. Yeah, yeah. I would be surprised if Crosshair killed him off screen because he asks for him, right? Like right. there's a there's a small sense of like a familiarity, right, between Crosshair and Cody, and then it's like I've been abandoned again, right? It's called the episode is called the Solitary Clone, and so. Sorry. Because because he is because he's alone, right? And you see the, the the carefully established shots of like him trying to sit with clones, and they don't sit, you know, they don't sit with him, and you know, uh, there's a bit of bonding between them. So I think like even even though like he doesn't actually see eye to eye with Cody, he wants to bond with like he wants to some have that relationship. I think like I think it'd be strange if like Cody came back for the one episode and he killed him off screen. And, like, there wouldn't be more to do with him. Like, I think there's clearly an arc that they're trying to develop here, and I guess we'll see where it goes. I think it's stronger, though, if he is killed off screen and it's by the Empire, because that would be pivotal for Crosshair's journey in this season. So Cody feels abandoned, and that's, you know, and, and if he feels that Cody has abandoned him, He's the reason everyone's abandoned him is because he is pro empire. He's like the empire. This is who I work for. Good soldiers follow orders. If he finds out that the empire killed Cody, what is that going to do for his loyalty to the empire? It's going to put him on a very interesting decision point. Does he keep going, or does he rebel in his own way somehow? So I, I think I think Cody is dead, and I think the empire did it. Specifically, specifically that that commanding officer guy. That would, no one uh, can remember his. That name. would be that would be yeah. really interesting if they, you know, eliminate Cody off screen because I, I feel like though like this being a Filoni show and Filoni knows how much fans <laughs> like love and appreciate these characters. I feel like I think I don't think we're gonna know anything. Like I, my prediction is we're not gonna know anything the rest of the season about Cody and this is going to be something that is either referenced again when Filoni's at celebration and he comes out with a t-shirt that says Cody, is alive. Cody lives or some shit. <laughs> um, I disagree. I, I think maybe Crosshair's arc will be tied into this fate of Cody. And I, and I think Christian is mm. onto something. Maybe Cody's death will be something that ignites something else in Crosshair, but I don't think it's necessarily happened yet. It's the spark that oh, so you think- ignites the the rebellion. The rebellion. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, so that, that's interesting. So you're so you're thinking maybe Cody did escape, then they'll meet back up. That 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 does that sounds more Filoni. Yeah. Uh, that where they'll meet up later yeah. in the season, and then, and then maybe then and Cody then he dies. will have to, and then he might have to make a choice of like, do, do I, kill, I Cody? kill Cody? Right? Because and we've already seen will. we've already seen like he says, "Good soldiers follow orders." He let the Bad Batch live. He let his brothers live. He came to the conclusion of season one. You guys are not the good guys. I'm following these orders, but I will not kill you. Right? 
Because those are his brothers. That's the unit he served with. Does that extend to, like, a Cody? Right. That's where we're going to find out. Especially, like, Cody, like, sees this evil of the Empire, right? He, like, negotiates with this person. Uh, you know, the the person that's kind of running the, the planet. Right. And gets her to stand down. And then he's like, I give her my word. And that, and that guy's like, kill her. And, right. you know, Crosshair yeah. does it easily. You know, no issue. And so Is that any- clearly affects him. So, like, that hasn't happened for Crosshair. Maybe it never does. But when it comes to his fellow clones, that's where it might affect him a bit. Is anyone is anyone surprised? Because I remember watching that episode and being a little surprised because I always thought Rex and Cody were set up to be foils. So I was a little surprised to see Cody start to follow in Rex's footsteps. I thought they would have stayed on their own sides and eventually come to a head and where Rex would have had to kill Cody. So I'm a little surprised that they let Cody just, you know... Become so, Rex 2.0. I was actually, I was just, I was having this like thought, like the clone army is built because, well, depending on who you ask in the Star Wars universe, why it was built, you know, Sidious, Count Dooku, blah, 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 blah. Toys. Blah, blah. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. <laughs> um, deception, corruption, you know. Lies, lies. Deception, deception. Um, but, you know, this army is created and their main target, their main enemy is droids. They, you know, we see a lot of episodes in the Clone Wars of them training against droids. They are never trained to kill humanoids or living things. It's always droids. And then suddenly a switch is turned on, and now they are killing humanoids and living things. You know, it makes sense why the Empire is nervous and wants to get rid of these clones. Yeah. Because, yeah, that you were fundamentally telling a soldier you were, you know, put to, to defend and destroy this enemy... Yeah. It was basically, you know, it was not living. And they're layering layering in things. So, like, at the beginning of the episode, when Crosshair goes to sit with those two clones, in that little conversation, they reference something called the Defense Recruitment Bill. Right. And so I'm pretty sure that bill has to, that's something that's doing. That's with the rec- Stormtroopers. That's the recruiting the Stormtroopers. And you right. can see that at the end, right? You see the the other Stormtroopers come in, which you assume because they have the different helmets and style. Yes, are those are the. Recruits are people that right. buy into, like, the craziness of the empire right. of like this is the power and being something right? bigger. So so yeah, it, I, I think that's so part it makes of it. so it, like back to Chris's point of like Rex versus Cody. I don't think it, was, it will be a Rex versus Cody because, like we saw in this episode, Cody is questioning this idea yeah. of like we're killing and taking away humanoids, people who we're also supposed to protect. We're taking away you know their actual life and everything. Yeah. So I think I should, it, it makes sense and, why everyone is going and AWOL. If you, if you listen to Dave Filoni, like. The big reason he loved working on the Clone Wars is because he wanted to, like, he's always sympathized with the clones. And he always found this concept of these, like, individuals that were grown and bred to kill and, like, the depth to those characters. So it isn't surprising that he wants the bulk of them to be sympathetic, right? And not kind of have this, like, arc of just, like, we're evil. Because that's essentially where the movies leave them, right? They're just, like... We're our mindless killers, and we just right. kill everyone, and they just then we become 2.0. the empire, right? And that's like Cody has the great line there. He's like, "That's the difference between us and the droids, right? We." It just seems, it. it just seems like a a slight missed opportunity, though, because Rex was um, Anakin's general, or they worked closely together, right? And Cody was Anakin's, or Obi- I mean, Obi-Wan's. I mean Obi Wan's general. So, you know, it just seems like there was a, a, a slight missed opportunity there, I feel like, to have those two almost already, embody their or become opposite of their respective Jedi and then, you know, come to it. I just, you know, it just seems like a missed but, uh, but I, I think it still thematic works. beat. I think it works in some way, right? Like, the reason Rex is so anti-Empire from the very start is he gets his chip out mm-hmm. pretty much 20 minutes into the order going through, right? <laughs> yeah. Cody's chip is active. It's still there. He is naturally rebelling against this programming. Which uh, everybody, it seems which like. It, which is. is what happening to a lot of them. So I think it's like, it's, yeah. they're getting to similar ways, but it's two very different ways. So I think Cody is going to be our main clone who kind of embodies this. Just because I have this chip doesn't mean like I'm always going to follow this type of thing. 
Yeah, and totally. I think, and I think like that's probably what you'll see through the Bad Batch. Just like a lot of these clones retired, killed off, eliminated, going to hiding. Right, because it's like, why in seventeen short years do clones disappear? Disappear? Part, yeah. oh, pretty much off the face of the galaxy. Yeah, it's interesting because in an expanded uh, Star Wars, I think it was in the Rogue Squadron books. I know I bring those up a lot, but there was a, there's a scene where one of the Rogue Squadron pilots crash lands on a moon or a planet, and uh, you know this pilot notices that all the the men are like middle aged; they all look the same. He's like, at first, he's like. Oh, they, they, it's, a, it's just a giant family, and all the dudes look the same age. There must be a bunch of cousins. And then he realize, he puts it together. He's like, oh, no, these are former clone troopers in hiding with families. Now they have kids, and they've married, and, and all this stuff. So uh, it was really cool. It was really cool to see that in Expand Universe, because that was the first time I had come across references to the Clone Wars, and then actually dealing with the clones uh, in that setting. So that blew my mind when I read it. So the fact now that we're seeing in this animated show, clone troopers uh, sort of abandoning the Empire, sounds like unmass, and it sounds like going into hiding. You know, I'm very curious to see how that's depicted, if uh, they set up, like, these hidden colonies throughout the galaxy or something. Yeah, and we know, like, through Rebels and, and such, that Cody isn't necessarily, like a leading voice in the rebellion. So potentially like his role, if he lives right beyond this immediate timeline is potentially leading that with some of these clones of like, we're going paradise. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm ready to leave. And maybe that's part of it because there is a tiredness to him in this episode of like, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of like doing this. And that's probably why he left. Also, because if he, he was interested in rebelling, right, wouldn't he contact Rex and be like, I'm your guy on the inside. Like, let's do this. Oh, yeah, and stay and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's just like, I'm leaving. I'm done. The other thing, too, is remember the clones age faster. Yeah. So their life is not a full, they don't get a full, I mean. 80 years or whatever. Whatever it is, right? I think they get tops. I mean, Cody. Like 30? Rex is know. confirmed to be, like, the old guy in. in um, Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi, and that's what, like, third... No, not even, like, 20 cents in like, years. I don't know. It's probably, like, 30 years. Because between episode three and four is 17, 17. years. But what's then, the, this, it's what? What's the time between four and six? Four, five, and six is something like five years. So, like, yeah. It's, it's like 20, 20 plus years. 20 plus years, know? yeah. And he's old. He's old. So he's an old man. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. But Damn. by the time... But so then by the time of the sequel trilogy... Then yeah, there's probably no clones. Probably around. very few, yeah. if if any. If any. Did Cody go off off screen to be in a spinoff? Cody Clone Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> He's but in a spinoff game. Uh, uh, Cody iPhone Clone game. Farmer. Co- Cody though, the though farmer. I I do think with the, <laughs> I I made the joke about Dooku stuff. I feel like Dave Filoni is prepping us for like a Dooku a show? Count Dooku spinoff or something. Like, how else do you explain? All the Dooku references. The Dooku stuff in Tales of the Jedi, and then three straight episodes of like heavy Dooku references is just kind of like weird. Especially from I don't know. like. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. It, it feels like all of the, especially this third episode, right? You know, that I know we've talked a lot about, but they kind of try to set him up as like, Dooku was right. Like, he knew the Empire was going to be shit, and they're trying to, like, really. But he didn't know because he was stuff. helping the fucking bad guy. Of course he but knew. But are, try- are they trying? Is <laughs> Dave Filoni trying, as he's done with many of these, mm-hmm. like, prequel things, like, add a different side and ideology to these characters that add some layers to it, right? Where but we're, like, and we already saw it in Tales of the Jedi, right? Yeah, sure. So. And, like, look, Dave Filoni is the master of the in between Clone Wars between episodes two and three. Rebels between episodes three and four. Mandalorian between episodes six and seven. What's like his next, what's the next in between he could really do? Pre episode one, between episodes one and two. And who is apparently to Dave Filoni like a very interesting figure in that time frame? Count Dooku. It makes sense because he would have met do, uh, Palpatine in between one and two. Yep. That's when that would have happened. And you could, and think about all the stuff you could do with him training Qui Gon. Right. Uh, you know, the, stu- the stuff that layered. The, oh, the no, sorry, sorry, no. He would have met Palpatine before episode one. Because in Tales of the Jedi, he murders um, Yaddle. Yaddle. Right after the funeral. One. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. then he would have met. He's already working with Duke. He's already work- talking to Palpatine at that right. point. Yeah. 
And then went, but when, because he, because Palpatine raises Maul from when Maul was, I don't know, like eight or nine, roughly. So yeah, the when did, I'm, yeah, I'd be curious, like, when did him and Palpatine cross paths? That would be interesting. It'd Find be, out in Dooku, the show. Dooku, the <laughs> TV show. Dooku, the moisture farmer. Dookie. <laughs> Dookie. Dookie. Dooku's duty. That's <laughs> duty. Duty. Yeah, that that's what is. this There's is leading up to. Duty and Dooku. Also, somebody can call him Dookie. Dookie. <laughs> it's me, Dookie. It's a me, My little Dookie. Dookie. You know, our, our sentence is crosshair duty Filoni. <laughs> or like no, no. It's uh, Filoni's, it's Filoni's duty Colon crosshair. Colon. That's his. Wait, so do you think? Wait, wait. I'm sorry. Do you think Dave Filoni names his poops after characters? He's like, you know Star what? This Wars? poop. Oh, absolutely. Of a crosshair. <gasps> I have a great idea for a new character. <laughs> Looks like a crosshair. <laughs> no. That's disgusting. Oh man, that's the absolute yeah. worst. So, should we talk about those other two episodes? It's funny. Like, what what else is there to say in episode four? Faster. I mean. Tech, I will say this. Tech is probably the coolest character ever where he just knows when he's right. I think uh, here's what we got to mention with episode four. We got another tech centric episode. Uh, Juno, I think, brought it up uh, after we watched the first two episodes. You get the feeling they're setting up tech so he can die this season, maybe? There's so much you know? tech. I like, feel it. There's more tech in episodes one, two, and four than I feel than like the, entire the entirety season of season one. I mean, yeah. but they could also be. I mean, they they like why Omega has Omega wow. Omega Omega I weird Omega. why Omega has like aged a little bit is because a lot of the feedback that fans had said was they didn't feel comfortable or like the idea that she was so young in comparison to you know her brothers, and I'm wondering if there was also fans that were like, oh, we want to see more of the other character. Like, we don't yeah. want to just focus on Crosshairs and Hunter. Um, but they're Omega. Omega. the coolest. They are the coolest, but it, it is nicer <laughs> to like, focus on these other characters. No, no, for, it, it is for sure. Um, the other thing I'll bring up in episode five that was uh, that mildly picked, piqued my interest because I thought it was weird, and I was like, "Is she force sensitive?" Is the Wanda Sykes pirate character like when the booby trap falls? She like brush like she like quickly reacts, and I was like. That seems like Jedi esque, right? Wait, the, we we the, had a the treasure hunter. We had a yeah. season. Somebody had a season one prediction that Omega was a force sensitive. No, clone. no, no, not Omega. The Wanda Sykes pirate character. Oh, that, okay. When the well, booby trap happens, like ten minutes in, she, I think, like, like knocks tech out of the way or something i'm sorry this this feels very much like that uh v- that youtube video christian likes to watch about jar jar biggs see oh. how he moves like so he's a Jedi. That was good. For whatever reason that was the first thing that sure, popped into my sure, mind of sure. like that reaction time feels very jedi-esque sure but I, I would i would argue that like she's a treasure hunter she does this quite a bit like you pick up on some habits i mean i was expecting there maybe to be some rel- like revelation but then sure. there wasn't i was like oh it's just to it's try to like defend that episode a little bit aka <laughs> just kind of Don't. like be a troll for a second to arjuna <laughs> did you not even like like the music of the episode because i thought it, the music was actually pretty good it's very indian jones-esque which i thought was kind of cool it's just like a cheap imitation <laughs> Like, if I want to watch Indiana Jones, I'll go watch Indiana Jones. Right? And the Temple, Temple of Doom, right? Skull. I'm not yeah, watching Skull. Episode yeah. 5 I'll of Season 2 I'll go watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> is that the new one? That's what the yeah. new title is. Yes. Wait, the Dial of Destiny? That's yeah. a terrible yeah. name. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. Indiana Jones is finally going to break its own streak of the, the odd movies being good. Okay. Ooh. No, I think this will uh, be good. I, I have so. faith in this one. Five. Unquestionable faith. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, we're shifting to, wait, when does that new indie come May. out? May? Oh, that's forever away. You say that, but it'll be May pretty no, quick. No, it'll be, yeah, it'll be May next week. I don't think that's how time it. works. No, it's time. how it works. Yeah. So, so, nothing, so nothing about episode five was like I mean, even the, machi- the machine The machine thing looks so familiar. It does. It looks like a creature, and I'm sure, like... Probably from some other sci-fi thing. And that's what I think really annoyed me the most out of these last two episodes. It's like, this looks like Darkseid. This looks like it's from, like, a different sci-fi movie. And I'm like... Art imitates art. But this, it, it just felt, this feels like so blatant of like... Or just stealing. We're just going to steal these designs. You know what it's from? No um, Horizon. 
Zero Dawn. That game. Yeah. There are gi- those gi- they, there's yes. a creature that looks yeah. just like that. Yeah, and I'm just like, why, why also, are Also, there's we... a Pokemon, I think, that kind of resembles it as yeah, well, too. Yeah. And it just, Luigia. That's a little... That's annoying to me. That takes me out of it. And just like... Not that Star Wars is like the most original sci-fi thing ever, as you know. It's stolen from a <laughs> few is. different things. Borrowed. But at least some of the designs and stuff have been like somewhat unique and somewhat interesting. I mean, I, I, I'll i back our Juno up. I'll back our Juno up on this. The, the mecha thing, it, 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 there's nothing else in Star Wars that looks like it. And he's right. It looks like it's something that was pulled out of a different show completely. I was um, just like, oh, cool. We're now in Pacific Rim Star Wars say, edition. <laughs> hell yeah. I was like, what is this? But that's cool, though, because, again, don't you want not cool. like, other aspects? Like, th- I'm sure at some point in the history of Star Wars, there, this what happened on that planet, like that is going to be mentioned I do. somewhere. I do want it to be. Like, but I, I, I want it to be mm-hmm. impactful and interesting, not just like, we're going on a treasure hunt and we accidentally found this sure, robot sure. and then we blew it up. Okay, let's all go back home. Nothing's changed. Good old adventure of the week. <laughs> oh, we're 0 for 2 on finding treasures. Ah, <laughs> good one, man. <laughs> the Empire is killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like what are we doing? Like what are we doing with this? We're going like, on this treasure some, hunt while the Empire have some massacres urgency people. with oh, your man. show. You know what I mean? Well, they're trying Dang to. I mean, Juna. but again, again, the whole reason they I went love on this, this spicy this, Arjuna. They went on this treasure hunt is because they're trying to get money so that they can be free of. And they didn't get the goddamn hide. money, right? Because and they failed again. And they failed again. They literally just copied what they did in the first two episodes. Arjuna <laughs> wants what every. Dungeons and Dragons player and G, uh, DM wants, you know, your actions have to have consequences, especially right. your failures. Are they just going to show up next week ready to kick ass again? Like, we're literally, <laughs> we're, like I said, we're five episodes into the season. Right. And I feel confident in saying this. By the time we get to the end of the season, we could have been like, episodes one, two, four, and five, you could have removed and the season still makes the exact same sense and you would, you don't miss a beat. And no kids Correct. would have cared. And no kids would have cared. Or would Arjuna, this show is not made for true. you. Uh, yeah. well, this I'm is a children's it. show. This is not your show. I, I will <laughs> say this, though. Like, nobody here uh, has read the High Republic books, uh, unfortunately, because uh, we, we... We can't read. We, yeah, exactly. No, actually, no. Uh, when we try to read the High Republic books, some of us fall off a treadmill. So, oh, that's right. I, oh, I, yeah. uh, I don't... Who's reading on a treadmill? I was this guy was, <laughs> yeah. You can't even. Um, but to me, it was also an audiobook type thing. So, like, oh, okay. But I got like, wait, I was, just, I was not focusing on the walking aspect. Anywho, uh, <laughs> Anywho. I, I do wonder if that that planet, the race or the species that were mentioned, I do wonder if there's something that's related to like the High Republic stuff, because we know that they are trying to bring what we what's been spoken about in the High Republic book series to like more present day Star Wars. Uh, a big example of this is the new Jedi Fallen game that's coming out, Survivor. Yeah, um, the it looks like the uh, antagonist is a fallen Jedi who was put on ice from the High Republic era. Oh, so Khan. Nice. So, so Khan, basically in yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, we're doing a Khan uh, part. Cool, now. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Sith is America. It Revan? Uh, no, I do not believe it's Revan. Revan oh. technically, actually, Revan is canon now. He is? I believe it was mentioned Some in somewhere. And, oh, it was mentioned in, was it like a space mo- maneuver or something? It's mentioned in a book. Isn't it also Revan like something in episode nine, I think was mentioned? Potentially. I, I remember, remember I read something like yeah. that. Like there's yeah. in the, when they go to like the Sith planet. There's some reference Ex- to him. Exegol? Yeah, there's some reference to him. If only we had uh, the ability to look this up so we're not just kind of Episode 9, I dislike so much, I refuse to look it up. <laughs> refuse to integrate myself into that J.J. J. Abrams abomination. I think there are a few times wow. that Poe Dameron was revving his engine. <laughs> I guess that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> it's an audio thing. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man, you know I, rev- you know if if the giant robot somehow becomes more relevant mm. to whatever they're doing with this season of Bad Batch, right? You know, it maybe won't. maybe I'll be like, oh cool, this episode had meaning. But as of right now, <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean it means nothing. It's true. Yeah. It's gonna Delete be a no, bro. Delete it. If I could, if I could go into like Disney Plus, right? And I mm-hmm. could go through the episodes, and you could just delete the ones you don't like, only keep the episodes you like. 
I'm just keeping episode three. I'm dumping the rest. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, Whoa. so I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in. So, you know, I've agreed with most of what you said, but I'm going to say this right now. This is going to piss you both off. Oh, boy. I enjoyed episode four. Ugh, that's that I like that. Me off. That doesn't piss me off. That's like, gross. Oh, good. I, I didn't, I didn't. That episode I disliked a less, a lot less. <laughs> I still dislike you. It. Still hated it. A lot it, less then. than episode five. Like there was still, at least I was entertained in that episode, yeah. and it reminded me of pod racing and some of the like, those fun elements of Star Wars. Was it too long? Like, yeah, it did, it did feel a little like. Was twenty two minutes for like that plot long? I would have been like fifteen <laughs> minutes. I'm like, this is a nice tight fifteen. Like, if you're gonna make a children's show, do the like, you know, eleven minute episodes, like you know, back to back or whatever. Like, don't waste my time with a that's that episode five was twenty seven minutes. Okay, can't get, <laughs> I can't get that twenty seven minutes of my. Wow, you've got the you got the runtime memorized, Juno. Dude, his, his this is his canto. It's excruciating. Bite. This he is fa- this is Juno is in pain can- right now. We have found it's the canto. Bite. It's yeah. crazy. This is this is great. Wait, 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 real quick. Wait, if a show has a shorter runtime, that means it's technically made for kids. No, but I'm just saying, like, oh, because because like, I've been watching a lot of It's Always Sunny, and they have episodes where they're like 15, 18 minutes so, sometimes. So, so, <laughs> so like Nickelode- so Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, for example, with a lot sure. of their animated shows, you know, you have the 30 minute block, but they'll do like two episodes in the 30 minute block, so it times out to like 11 minutes with per episode, yeah. and then you have four minutes of commercials for each. Gotcha. Like SpongeBob episodes always have like two and a half an hour. You know? I'm sorry, June. Do you watch SpongeBob still on cable? TV? No, I do not. Do you pay watch. for cable? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> but at the beginning of the pandemic, I did. They have the first. What? They had the first five seasons of SpongeBob on Prime. Okay. And I did rewatch classic SpongeBob. I gotta say, it still slaps. It's still great content. Wow, that's amazing. It's good. I mean, it's good. I mean, the first, yeah, the whatever. first few seasons, the, the first three seasons. I mean, sure. Steven Hillenburg, the uh, creator, right, departed because they worked on the movie. And then after that, the show went downhill. Gotcha. That's when it became just like a true children's show. So when just you, for the kids. So when are you going to start like <laughs> reviewing like classic SpongeBob episodes? Yeah. I can start right now. All right. Episode one. Uh, I believe it is Leaf Blower. Okay. Uh, Let's keep moving on here. Well, they actually, ran out of actually, tape. I, I think we can actually get to, to the big question here of, of, you know, asking, you know, was it good? And I think, you know, usually... We would specify, but I think because everyone has different thoughts on these episodes and which were good, which were bad, which were so terrible that you're going to write a strongly worded letter to Dave Filoni. Dear Mr. Filoni. My name is Arjuna. You've ruined my year. What is this, Filoni? Uh, Make wow. more episode threes. We are going <laughs> to cluster them together as uh, for, the, for the big question here. So, uh, Krishna... I'm not going to pick you. I'm going to go with Arjuna. <laughs> Arjuna was Bad oh. Batch Season 2, Episodes 3, 4, and 5 combined into one blob. Good. Wow, this is really tough, honestly. Really? Wow. Well, it is? Know. Despite the way you've been, just way you've been talking, Juno, it sounds like it should be easy. Despite the hatred that my heart has for Episode 5. Wow, Chris's face. I did... <laughs> Really enjoy episode three a lot. Okay. And episode four was passable enough. So, like, they almost cancel each other out, right? Gotcha. Though episode... I would say, like, episode three is closer to the the best of Star Wars than... Well, well, episode five is really, like, some of the worst of Star Wars. I'm sorry. What about the last season wow. of The Clone Wars with the sisters... I don't hate arc. I don't hate that arc as much as you guys do. Oh. I understand the repetitive. No, I, it's not good. Sure, I understand the repetitive. Wait, 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 wait. Do this I hate episode, episode five? five? Yes, I do. Wow, this is gonna be my Kanto butt. This is the hill this, I die on. Now this for is Star it. Wars. Oh wait, hold on. Um, uh, 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 the Book of Boba Fett episode. Which was the worst episode? The one, one through eight. <laughs> yeah, is this b- worse or what's what's worse? Yeah, this is might be worse. <sighs> this might crazy. be worse. Wow. Episode nine, the movie, the fall. I mean, that's 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 okay. That's, that's okay. the low point. Okay, okay. So in terms of, but that's just depressing, right? This one like got me angry. Wow, you know, just episode nine didn't get me angry. I was just sad. I was just like, well, you of know. how shitty it was. Yeah, but I didn't have high expectations for that that right movie either. And ultimately, I'm going to say yes. Whoa, okay. I'm going to say yes because episode three was, was good so enough, good. and I liked 
enough parts of episode four for me to push it over. Gotcha. Let's say. Okay. So Damn. I'm going to say yes. Interesting. Krishna, was Star Wars The Bad Batch season two, episodes three through five good? Yes, it was good. Um, you, you know, I episode five, yeah, it wasn't good, but <laughs> for me, it felt in line with the rest of the filler episodes for yeah. when he's created. Um, three was really good. Uh, I would agree. It's some of the best Star Wars we've seen. I uh, love that moral stuff going on in there. Uh, and yeah, episode five was, oh, four, I'm sorry, four, the racing episode was entertaining enough. Uh, I liked that tech was more robot than the actual robot and the robot was more human than tech. Like I thought that was a, that was a cool little switcheroo that, you know, I kind of enjoyed seeing play out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say it was good. Uh, right now, it feels like honestly this season's kind of on par with where season one was for me. Um, you know, some good stuff and some mid stuff, a lot of mid, and then some lows. Uh, that just kind of tracks for most of the uh, most Filoni seasons. So Filoni, right there, yeah, right there. Uh, Ravi was. Bad Batch Season 2, Episodes 3, 4, and 5, good. No. <laughs> wow, despite Shocker. you saying Episode 3, some of the best of Bad yeah, Batch no. you've ever sure, seen. Sure, sure. You guys are all over the place today. <laughs> but here, but the, I mean, it's a, it's a very simple thing. Like, major, <laughs> It's a majority, you know, majority wins here, and, and the majority of these three episodes were not good. And, you know, I, I, I don't think Episode 5 was, like, the worst of them. Well, like, you thought 4 was worse. I thought... Uh, yeah. Four was the worst thing because it was just super predictable. Um, but, like, in general, you know, pacing issues, just campiness overall. And then also, did you the also go from, like, such a, a strong, like, thought-provoking episode to that, right? <laughs> it just, like, you have to look at it as a whole where it's just like, yeah, clearly some pieces are just not aligning or... You know, things are being missed. Or I mean, or you don't, we're, we are artificially looking at these three episodes as a whole, right. right? I mean, it's been the last three weeks, right? So maybe that's on us. Because, <laughs> like, look, if we're doing this, if we did this show week to week, right? We would it, would be, like, it would be, it would be, yes, it would be worse. no, no. Yeah, it would be right. yes, no, no. Right? right, most likely, right? Yeah. Maybe there's maybe some there's more mixed on four, but you know, I think we all say no on five. We definitely all say yes on three. Um, so it's interesting. I, I when I watched episode three, I almost felt like, hmm, should this have been the premiere of the season? Right, especially because it's like you where you pick up with Crosshair. It's like it's been thirty two days right. since you were like you were stuck on Camino, right? So you're kind of picking up where that left off. And I was like, yeah, if <laughs> the other four episodes have been stronger, but could you imagine like that starts your season and then two through five sure. is two episode premiere, which is like, okay. And then like four and five, which were definitely weaker. Then you're just kind of like almost a, a quarter of your season is very like oof. Oof. You know, I mean, it's weird too. Like the first two episodes are again, Kitty reintroducing these characters, but then just ends so dark. And then it leads us into, you know, episode three, which is dark. But then the shift, it just like it's just it's just weird. It's just a weird shift. And I I think too yeah. because like I wonder if part of this is the Andor effect too, where like things were moving, things were happening in that show. Characters, you know, they <laughs> this this show's so static in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. Like you reset almost each week with the Bad Batch, and they're like hanging out at the bar. <laughs> hey Sid, what thing do you have for us this time? You know, and there's like there's not a lot of status quo. Maybe that's part of like this early part part of the season, right? And like maybe there will be stuff that I hope there is stuff that because we still have eleven episodes, not eleven yeah. weeks, eleven episodes. If I remember correctly, it's a couple two parters. Yeah, there's there's two two parts, so that puts us at nine weeks. So about two more months of this. Yeah, and then we're led into, and then and then we jump into the Mandalorian, which is interesting. Because it's two months away, and all we have publicly available is that one trailer. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? Like, shouldn't there have been more or another trailer by now? I also think about how how cool that it is, is that we that it's on the cycle. I remember having to wait a whole like summer for new shows to come out, mm-hmm. 
at age as me. Do you think they were nervous about these three episodes? Or like five was so bad. You guys all hate it. Do you think that when they released them, they're like, should we really put this one after <laughs> this one? <laughs> no. So I think, I, think, yeah. I think they don't. Like, there's plenty of like mid to bad episodes of this animated shows. Like, honestly, it's, it's interesting that, Ravi, you brought up the idea that the show is static. Because most of Clone Wars is just oh, like I, I that. Did. They reset every week. But uh, at least, but different at least, planets, so, different characters. So, so I brought it up. But the reason I think it works for Clone Wars is because you always start with new characters and you're always kind of changing out who you're following. The, I think the reason it's, stick, it's stickier with Bad Batch is you're following the Bad Batch, right? Like, so, you know, we've had almost a season and a half and they just haven't really changed. And you're just they're, like... They're, wait, wait, their armor changed. Yeah, for your toy collection, <laughs> you know. But like, you're not seeing you're not seeing momentum within the story, right? And even like, the Clone Wars as a show was built to be like, you know, that this is like a two year thing. Like, we're going really finite and really specific with details. Um, this is this is a show like you're like, how long is the show going? Like, how, what's the time frame we're kind of covering? And I, yeah. I, I'm kind of getting to this point where I'm like. Do something. I need something to happen a little bit more here. You're prodding with the stick and saying, do something. Pretty yeah. much. It's yeah. like, okay, like we have this group that is interesting on paper, but like how many interesting things have they done? Two. Well, they helped destroy Camino. Very cool. <laughs> Very well, cool. not cool, but you know. I thought it was cool. Well, I, I mean, in, in terms of the, not what they did, but in terms of the, the thematic, the, how the visual stuff. The, the stuff, the visual stuff. The stuff, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Man, I mean, this is going to be probably one of my more favorite pods that we've done. So the negativity. Like, so it's just because we finally get Arjuna to like... Oh, I still said yes. I know, but at the same time, <laughs> you still said some, some key things, which I will clip out. Great. That, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> great. Man, your mouth says super. yes, but yeah. your review says no. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it's a yes, You're, but yeah. it's like a four out of ten. Essentially, <laughs> basically. Wait, that's yeah. bad then. <laughs> my my barometer for good and bad is off. Hey, did you <laughs> guys say that this batch of episodes was a bad batch? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Ravi would say yes. I would say no. Yes. <laughs> <'Cause it's> like, <laughs> because I yes. said okay. yes. <laughs> Christian, we'll yes. give you a chance. Do you want to change your answer? No, but no. takes backs. Because, but here's backs. the thing. Because here's the thing. This is. This show is this season. I've gotten exactly what I expected, so you know Though, it's like you know you. So yeah. I I do want to bring up one thing when you mentioned about Crosshair. You wanted four episodes. There's 16 episodes and we're five in. And we've only had one Crosshair episode. Yeah. So if you do I'm the nervous. math, I'm it's nervous. only three. Yep. Which means you have to say the season's not good. Yeah, you have to yeah. have to say it. It tra- and it tracks. Tra- so far, it tracks. Yeah. I mean, put it this way: the best episode of the season was with Crosshair. I would agree with you guys. We've had like 2.3 mid episodes and then the rest have just been bad. I, 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 we've got to get more crosshair in there. It's got to be done. It's the most interesting character uh, and situation in, in the show. Agreed. Bar none. Bar none or far enough? until, until they bring in the, until they bring in the clone stuff with Omega and Omega, uh, Palpatine and Snoke and Grogu. Oh, that's get, right. You know, yes, our then, crazy theory. That might, that might save it. Right. Is Omega uh, Ray's mom? No. no. No, I don't think so. No, it's um, Palpatine's granddaughter, so. What if right, Omega is, is... Oh, but we don't know who... Palpatine's f- daughter. Mother. Oh, I see what you're saying. Wait, wait. We already weird. know that it isn't, though. All weird. Shit. Star Anywho, Wars. that's going to do it for us here on the mm-hmm. What's a Good Podcast. As ours, you can follow us along on YouTube or check out our full videos on YouTube.com slash What's a Good. Check us out on TikTok, Instagram at What's a Good Pod. Follow us on Twitter. It's Ryan by a machine at Was It Good. And our website, What's a Good.info. Till next time. Good day. <laughs>